الحمد للہ و صلاۃ وسلام علی نبی محمد وعلى علی و صحبہ وسلم اما برحب تفلا کوشن واز آسک وٹ از الولی اور ولایا اور الاولیاء ان ریفرنس ٹو بین دا اولیاء آف اللہ سبحانہ تعالیٰ وٹ از دس مین سو کامنلی وی فائنڈ دیٹ دس کانسیپٹ آف بین اے ولی اور ان فرام دا اولیاء وچ از پلورل refers to those people, it's often translated as the supporters or helpers or friends or beloved of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because the only of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they have certain traits. And this is why Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, he wrote a very famous treatise referred to Al-Furqan. It's called Al-Furqan. Uh, Al-Furqan bayna awliya rahman wa awliya shaytan. Uh, it is the criterion between the awliya of ar-Rahman, meaning the most merciful, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and the awliya of the shaitan. The awliya of the shaitan, meaning those people who are supported and supporters and friends, and those who are beloved to the shaitan and who may perhaps love the shaitan. So... There is a difference in their characteristics. And so he mentions from the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, distinguishing those traits. And I'm just going to mention a couple of very important traits that we need to be aware of regarding uh, being the only of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. This is, uh, so Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says in Kitab al-Kareem, قُلْ إِن كُنْتُمْ تُحِبُّونَ اللَّهِ فَاتَّبِعُونِ يُحْبِبَكُمُ اللَّهِ وَيَغْفِرْ لُكُمْ ذُنُوبُكُمْ وَاللَّهُ غُفُرْ رَحِيمٌ So this first ayah, this is in Ali Imran, Surah Ali Imran, uh, verse 31. Very important. What verse? Verse 31. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Kitab al-Kareem, قُلْ إِن كُنْتُمْ تُحِبُّونَ اللَّهِ فَاتَّبِعُونِ يُحْبِبُكُمُ اللَّهِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and he's ordering the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to say this, because he says, قُلْ This is in the, in the imperative form. This is fi'l amr. That means the Prophet uh, Allah commanded the Prophet uh, to say this. He said, Say, in kuntu to hibun Allah, if you love Allah, fatabi'uni, then follow me. Yah, bibakum Allah. And Allah will love you. So that lets us know, Ahabitabillah, in order to be from the only of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this first characteristic is that. You have to follow the Prophet ﷺ. It isn't simply enough to claim that you love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And as we've mentioned countless times, the, the scholars, they mention a principle, which is <laughs> that the reality of something is in its substance, not in its, la- its name. So that means the reality is not in your claim that you love Allah. How many... People of Bid'ah say, oh, we love Allah. Oh, I love Allah. Oh, you don't know what's in my heart. I love Allah. But yet they're the most openly disobedient people to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that means they're not showing their uh, love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And perhaps they are even lying, some of them. So the first criterion for being a wali of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that you follow the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu that you follow Muhammad ibn Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. How do we know this? Is this something I'm making up? Is it just a cliche term? Follow the sunnah, follow the kitab of sunnah, follow the salaf al-salih. Is this just something simple, uh, you know, we can just claim this? And is that really, how do we know that that's the way? It's because Allah tabaraka ta'ala says in the Quran, قُلْ إِن كُنْتُمْ تُحِبُّونَ اللَّهِ فَاتَّبِعُونِي يُحْبِبُكُمْ اللَّهِ If you love Say, if you love Allah, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is addressing us, if you, addressing you and I, and this is why the, the scholars, they call this ayat al-mihna, that this is the verse of the test, meaning that you, some of the scholars mentioned this, that this is where you put your deeds and you put yourself on this scale to show if you are really, where are you with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Do you really love Allah? Are you fitting the criterion of being a wali in any fo- shape or form? Because if, uh, uh, you know, so you can measure yourself. That's why they call it the ayat al-mihna. You know, it's an ayah of the test. 
or a, a, a test, so to speak. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Kulin kuntum Allah fa tabi'uni Allah. Then Allah will love you. If you follow the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, Allah will love you. And and what else? What else are you gonna get out of that? And he will forgive you of your sins. Wallahu ghafur rahim. And Allah is the most off forgiving and most merciful. Alhamdulillah. That ayat is a powerful clarification, indication of who the awliya of Rahman are. Don't say just because someone is saying this. Look look at the, the video that we did about the, a real video of the Sufi group of people. I don't know what sect they are, which, which Turk they are. But the guy had the nerve in the video and their sheikh was so pious, he didn't really want to speak. And that could have been really, I, my, my thing is that it was probably out of ignorance, really. Because the ignorance that they were propagating and the shirk that they were propagating and the bid'ah, mukaffara that they were propagating, they said, isn't it true, sheikh, that your father, that people who came in his presence, that they were automatically go to Jannah? And he nodded his head in so much humility and piety. Is he the only? Is that a characteristic of the only of Rahman or the only of Shaitan? Because how is it his father, Sheikh whoever, could guarantee people paradise, and that people by being in his presence could be in paradise because he's from the only of? But Muhammad ibn Abdullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, many people came in his presence. Some of the munafikin, the hypocrites. The disbelievers, the mushriks. They went to the uh, Jahannam. Khalidina fiha. Wa'iyadhan billah wa iyaqum min al-nar. The second ayah we need to look at. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Kitab al-Kareem. Ya yaladhina amanu man yartadda minkum an deenihi fa sofa yati Allah bi qawmin yuhibbunahum. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says we can have in Kareem. And who is he addressing? Ya Yuladina Amanu. Allah says, Oh you who believe. So here he's addressing the believers. So this is something just for the believers. Other people know. This is for the believers. Ahna Iman. Ya Yuladina Amanu. Men yartadda minkum. Andinihi. Whoever from amongst you leaves the religion. Then Allah will bring another people. And what is their characteristic? Because this is the trait of the awliya. That's the shahid. That's the point of missing in this verse. What is their trait of these people Allah is going to bring if you leave your religion? And how many people leave their deen? Leave the deen of Islam. For something in the dunya. From some kufr, for some shirk, for some fisk. Hold on to your deen. Allah will bring a people that love him and he loves them. So having love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the bigger point of this verse and how it's evidence for the awliya is because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addresses the believers. So what's another trait of being a wali, of being the awliya? Is that you have iman, you have to be from ahli iman, you have to be a Muslim. You have to believe in Allah. You have to believe in the pillars of Iman. You have to believe and practice the, the, the pillars of Islam. And all that Islam came with. You have to be from Ahl Iman. Mother Teresa did a lot of good deeds. Spent her whole life sacrificing. Charity. Sacrifice with the lepers. This and that and the other. All the way till she was, what, 90 something I think. And she died. Did she die any man? No. She didn't die any man. She was not of the people who said, Tu'minu billahi wa malaikati wa kutubihi wa rasulihi wa liyawm al-akhwa tu'minu bi qadri khayrihi wa shar. She wasn't of the people who believed in Allah. 
meaning Tawheed. Al-Rububiyya Tawheed Al-Uluhiyya Tawheed Al-Eeb Tawheed Al-Asmahi Wa Sifat She didn't believe in the categories of Tawheed All of them, no She was a Catholic And the angels And the books And the prophets Because she didn't follow the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam And The Day of Judgment And the divine destiny, Al-Qadr, the good and the bad of it. So she may have believed in some of those things, the angels, some of the, the books, things like this, but she did not believe, most importantly, in Tawheed. Correct Tawheed. Full Tawheed, Tawheed al ibadah devoting the worship to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. And again, even if we look at this, look at this, uh, also another faida. When we look at those two ayat, that I attain, we see two of the traits we just mentioned are really come down to what? The conditions for having your deeds accepted. Ikhlas wa mutaba. That you have sincerity to Allah, you worship only Allah alone, and that's what Ahli Iman does. And mutaba, that you follow the Sunnah of the Prophet, وسلم, and that's what Allah said in the first few, verse Kul in Kuntum to Hibbun Allah, but tabi'uni. If you love Allah, then follow me, meaning follow the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wa alaihi wasallam. So that is uh, uh, also uh, uh, traits of the olia. And Allah subhanahu wa taala says in Kitab al-Kareem, also mentioning who the olia of Allah inna al-olia Allah la khufun alayhim wa la hum yahzanun. Alladina amanu wa kana wa kanu yatakun. Allah subhanahu wa taala says. In Surah Yunus, verse 62 and 63. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ala inna Allah, la wa la hum Verily, the awliya of Allah, they don't have fear, and they don't become sad, and then he mentions their full traits and what makes them from the awliya. Because those are really the results of being the awliya. That they have comfort and they're not they don't they're not grieving doesn't mean they're not human and they no longer have sadness and they no longer uh have any fear fear dunyawi but their true khawf is of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and their grief they experience they can experience grief but they don't go to the extent of going beyond the bounds and destroying themselves because <coughs> They only grieve leaving Allah and being left by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say in the last part of the verse? Alladina amanu wa kanu yattaqun. Those who believe, this is the awliya, wa kanu yattaqun. And they feared Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Taqwa. And what is taqwa Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Taqwa is doing the awamrillah, it's doing the commands of Allah, and it's avoiding his prohibitions. So those are the traits of the awliya. It's not sitting in a room and being disobedient to Allah, saying that you reach the level of yaqeen and certainty in your ibadah, you no longer have to pray, you no longer have to fast, you can gain, uh, you no longer have to pay zakat and charity because you're yaqeen, you're at yaqeen. No, yaqeen, the Prophet ﷺ worshipped Allah until he died. The Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'in worship Allah wa ta'ala until they died. The Tabi'in with Ba'a Tabi'in wa Ahli Iman wa Ahla Sunnah throughout time worship Allah wa ta'ala until they die. Those are sifat of the awliya. Those are the characteristics of the awliya. Not that you think you have yaqeen. You, you redefine yaqeen from what the Mufassirin say about it, about that ayah. And you think that no longer you, you are responsible for. Uh, the commands of Allah nor the prohibition so that means you can have zina and these are real these aren't just scenarios I'm not just talking these are so many stories of people who claim to be the awliya throughout history in Muslim lands who left off ibadah and did the worst of sins zina with many women drinking alcohol in front of the masjid so many stories I've heard the scholars mention so many stories and so many people I know who have seen this in their own lands in Egypt and in Yemen. 
all throughout the Muslim world. This is not something strange. Because they believe they've reached Yaqeen. And the shaitan has distorted this concept of walaya to this extent. Our Shaykh uh, Abu Salah al-Afghani, Muhammad uh, Hisham, half of the law ta'ala, he mentioned uh, that when he was young, and I'm not sure if this is in a village in Afghanistan, but he mentions that, you know, and he didn't know what that meant because he said he was about seven years old or something like this. And he said that the uh, so-called wali uh, in this village or what have you or in this town, that he would go, they would make khalwa. And he said he didn't know. And he'd say, what is this? He asked his father about this because the people were accepting this in that locality. And this old man, who was supposed to be a righteous man, would take just enough little provisions for him to stay in seclusion in his house. He would dig out, they would dig out like a grave in their house. This is true. He related this to me and he witnessed this. They would dig out this uh, hole in the ground and he would have some provisions in there for 40 days in darkness. Not cleaning himself and not praying, no ibadah. Because he, he asked his father, you know, where's so-and-so? Oh, he's in Khalwa, son. Because this is to the extent of the people how much the shaitan deceived them to believe that they're awliya and that this is the sabil of awliya. But in fact, it's the sabil of shaitan. Sabil of kufr wa shirk wa zandaka. I want to uh, mention a big faida, last point regarding this concept of uh, being the awliya. In that the awliya, they have two levels, as our Sheikh Sheikh Abdul Razak Abedr, Hafidullah Ta'ala, he mentions this. He said, these two levels, he said, the first level, Darajatun fi'l al fara'id, faladi yu hafid alayha, wa yatrak al muharramat, hadha min awliya Allah, wa hiya darajal fi wilaya. He said, the first level of the person, of these awliya, the, of being a wali, is the person who they do the, the the obligatory duties and they you know you know they you have you know they 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 preserve they do them and they they're you know regular and they they guard their prayers for example and they leave the muharramat especially the major ones the major sins this is one level of being a wali of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this is a general a person who's, uh, you know, uh, from the awliya of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because they're a righteous person. Bi'idhnillah ta'ala. If they're doing these things. You know, they're worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in ilm wa fiqh wa basira. Without shirk and kufr. Without bid'ah. Hada ni'ma min ni'amillah. And that is one level of wilaya. So that's the first level. Then he mentions the second level. And this is the one we really want to pay attention to. He says, A'la minha darajatan. He said, and a greater level than that. من يفعل الفرائد ويترك المحرمات وينافس في فعل الرغائب ومستحبات وهذا معنى قوله تعالى ولا يزال العبد يتقرب إلي بنوافل حتى أحبه فإذا أحببته كنت سمعه الذي يسمع به وبصره الذي يبصر به ويده التي يبتش بها Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in a hadith Qudsi that the Prophet وسلم, reported on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay, for, first we're going to say, so the this higher level is this person does the obligatory duty and they leave off the muharramat and they strive to do those things which please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they strive to do the mustahabbat, the extra prayer, the extra fasting, the extra dhikr, the extra dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he says, and this meaning is encapsulated in the hadith, hadith Qudsi of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, what he reported on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in which Allah says, according to the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, a servant of mine does not continue to come closer to me except through his nawafil, except through his extra deeds until I begin to love him. That love of, if Allah loves you, that is what 
being an oliya is. That is what a, a wali is. And if I love him, then I am his ears he hears with, his sight he sees with, his hands that he touches with, and his legs in which he walks with. And if he asks of me, I will give him. And if he seeks help from me, I will assist him. This is an amazing when you think about it. That this is a true, truly being a wali of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that it's within our grasp if we can get our lives right. And make toba, And do the wajib. And avoid the muharramat. Stay away from the major sins at least. And strive to do extra prayer, extra fasting, and extra charity. And that's the end result. Bi'idnillah ta'ala. So that is a little bit about the concept of uh, of wali and we ask Allah the almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil and bless us to be of his awliya and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless our ulama sunnah who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made them uh, of the awliya because they shared beautiful beneficial knowledge which is a part of the minhaj al-anbiya the methodology of their prophets and the mirath of the prophets and it's their inheritance they're the inheritors of the prophets and they didn't inherit money they inherited ilm warath al-anbiya and they spread that knowledge and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cure our father imam sheikh allama abdul masan al-abad hafidh Allah ta'ala because I heard that he is very sick wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyya muhammad